Hey guys, what's going on? Operation Overlord here. You might have noticed I uh, changed my name from the Call of Duty Guy 100 to Operation Overlord. I felt that that was kind of a cheesy name. Um, I was young when I made it. So, yeah. I, I just felt like changing it because like, it was, seemed really old and childish. But uh, anyway, um, I said I would make a video after the uh, June reenactment in Peoria. Um, I haven't really had time to get around to that because I'm still waiting for things to come in and I've had work I've had to deal with lately and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I did a lot of thinking and I still have stuff that needs to come in but it hasn't yet so I decided that maybe I should uh, do like a three part series um, video of what I have for my LERP kit. Um, so I still have things coming in. Um, but this is me, like, I guess, like, part one out of part three. This one will be on my, uh, Lima Company, Erdl Impression. Um, and then the second video will be on my Tiger Stripes, um, Vietnam Impression. And then the third video will be, um, on all the gear that I have currently, like, that I actually use. Not the stuff, like, the OG 107s I have that I never bring out or, like, the M65 field jackets or any of that kind of stuff. It'll just mainly be like the stuff that I use like at reenactments or I use like for my own time. So um, this will be part one and I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so uh, this is uh, part of my kit um, for my unit. I do the RTO. Um, um, usually, like if I'm not, if we're like at a small amount of people, I usually use my Arvin Ruck, but uh, this is the configuration that I would use when I am the Team RTO. So, um, I'm going to start off with uh, everything on, and then I'm going to switch out the radio pack and put on my Arvin, and then show you guys that. So to start off, as you can see, um, where are my Ertles, and usually... I would have my face painted with my uh, my camo uh, face paint, but for the purposes of this video, I don't see why I should because you know I'm outside. It's kind of a waste of paint, and I don't really feel like it. But um, so right now I have my Prick 77 on. Um, if you can see the uh, Claymore bag on it, that is uh, what guys did. I somewhat portray. Um, a lerp from Lima Company named John Looney. I like really like his setup for his radio. Um, but yeah, this is a Prick 77. Um, got the regular antenna. I uh, don't have the handset at the moment. The uh, correct handset is the H33. Um, but I am working on getting that as soon as possible because um, uh, the guy that I got the radio from, he uh, he can't find the um, handset for it, so I gotta get one myself. But there's my Prick 77 on um, my right here. I got my butt pack. Um, my right here I got a jungle first aid kit. You guys would carry it in the side. Um, my right here I got my letdown rope. Um, here I got a canteen because I want to carry an extra canteen on whether they'd be wearing an Arvin or a radio. Um, I got my sea ration sock with actual sea rations in it. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but I have a first aid pouch on there, as well as an M7 bayonet and scabbard. Um, and then on this side, I have my golf bag. And then I have, yeah, my letdown rope. And then I got a cleaning kit on top of the butt pack. And, uh, got a carabiner attaching the rope to it and usually I carry my machete on the Arvin but um, I just feel like putting on there for right now because I actually I saw a picture of a guy putting it in there but plus I don't have much kit inside this I don't have the extra antenna or anything on it um, but that's my radio um, it's actually hollow on the inside it's
And then inside the butt pack, I have my uh, my uh, post Vietnam. It's like a 1972, I believe, dated poncho liner. Um. Yep. And uh, I don't have this uh, Playmore bag packed right, but guys just throw whatever they want in there. In here, I just have my mess kit. 1966 dated. And then I just got my gun lube. And uh, most guys, they would wear an SKS vest. Around them, they'd take them off like the dead end VA and VC, and they'd use them to carry M16 mags because they could hold a lot more. Guys would just cut off the uh, top straps on it, and they'd uh, just tie it around their uh, their chest area, and they put it on. Um, and here's my machete. Uh, it's a 66 dated sheath. And then the machete is an Ontario made machete. Machete. And I just put a 100 mile an hour tape around the handle to give it a, a better grip. And then here's a top look at the uh, top of the radio. Um, I keep a M60 bandolier. Usually I would just wear it around it with this. Um, and it's dated 73. And then I have a uh, M60 bandolier, it's a Type 2 one. I have a, uh, uh, the correct flashlight, the red lens, and it's got the no hand guards on the side. And uh, yeah, it works great. So moving on to my Stabo. This is actually a, the newest Stabo I have, the old one I have. Uh, that's to me in the Part 3 video. But this one I actually picked up at a garage sale. Um, some dude got it for uh, uh, rock climbing in Colorado. He didn't know what he had. These things go for so much, but he got it for 30 bucks on eBay. He only used it twice. I don't know how he used it, but he just did. Um, and he sold it to me for 15 bucks. Great deal. Um, and I believe it's original. But, alright. So, the Stavo is under here. I believe it's type 1 because it does not have the adjuster buckles. They're just long straps and I taped them up with 100 mile an hour tape. Um, I got my uh, gas mask bag right here for the grasshopper gas mask. Um, I got my USAF um, survival knife um, sheath as well. And I got my strobe pouch with my SDU-5 in it. Um, on my shirt, I have a uh, correct watch, um, and then I got my uh, pads. They would use the 45 pads. I don't know if you can see that date. Yeah. Um, so I got two M67, M16 pouches. Um, I got two M67. Uh, baseball grenades. Then I got two lemon grenades. Um, I got a horizontal, I mean a vertical weave pistol belt holding us all up. Um, I got my first canteen on this side. Yeah. And uh, I took a compass pouch and taped it to it. Guys would do this if like the battalion riggers were not able to. So with the pouch on, they would either sew them on or they'd tape them with 100 mile an hour tape. Um, and then I got my uh, my compass right here. And here's the pouch. And then my canteen is 1964 dated. I'll focus. But yeah. The canteen cover, I don't know what date it is, but it's really faded. Right here, I got another canteen pouch. They would use, actually, a lot of guys use, like, their full setup as canteen pouches because they can hold a lot more mags than the regular M16 pouches. Right here, I got another letdown rope. 
Um, and I got another canteen pouch to hold ammo. These two right here, they both have nylon trim on them. They're not the regular uh, duck canvas, they are the nylon trim. Right here I have my other canteen. And uh, canteen is dated 1969. I can focus. Yeah, and then uh, I have my uh, canteen cup, and this is a WCW model. It's got the thin lip, not the fat lip. Um, that's basically everything for my uh, Stabo web set harness. So on to my uh, fatigues. Um, I have my towel and the Lerps for Lima. They would wear black t-shirts under their, uh, Ertles. Um, got private ranks. My watch, like I said before. Lima Company, uh, Hunter for Airborne. Name tape. Army tape. Um, Nomex gloves. Guys would wear these a lot. Because instead of painting your hands, they would wear the gloves to cover them up because like you could either like they'd be all painted up and um if they uh had their sleeves rolled up they would paint their whole arms and hands or they just wear gloves and paint their arms so guys most of the time kept their sleeves down um i got my short brim boonie hat it's the lerp style and it Fits great. Um, OD towel. It's Vietnam. Um, my pockets. I carry my uh, face paint. Um, got a sea ration spoon. And I got my Charlie ration cookbook. Months ago. Here's my signal mirror. And uh, yeah, so. It's original. Then I just have some uh, chapstick. The, I think it's this one's dated 1962. And then I have some water purification tablets. So I got my trousers. And then I got my black buckle. It's the correct open face. Um, and then I got my original jungle boots. They have the correct soles on them and these were original and they were uh, unissued when I got them and then I am wearing OD GI wool cushion sole socks um, so yeah this is my uh, lerp setup for my RTO and then I will show you my uh, Arvin rucksack alright guys this is my Arvin ruck I'm wearing um, it's original uh, right here, on the bottom I have my uh, poncho, it's 1959 dated, the rubberized, and I have an M67 carrier holding it on the bottom. Um, for the straps of it, I have just pads on it because I don't feel it's comfortable enough, and guys would do that with any kind of rucksack, they put pads on it. Uh, on this side I got an M67 uh M16 mag pouch and then I got a, a canteen on that side with pouch and stuff look at it Got the X frame on it still. I would I usually keep my machete um on this loop right here and then tuck down between this pouch. But the other day when I was using this, um I saw that the machete or something clipped it and ripped it a bit right here, so 
I don't know if I'm going to use my machete on it anymore. Might probably tuck it up through the top of this or something like that. So this is my lerp stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, this is part one. And I'll see you guys in part two, which will be my uh, Tiger Stripes uniform and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.